This is the first of six videos working through Decision 2 exam questions. In this first question, we're going to look at the Hungarian algorithm. Reading through the question, we have five trainers, Ali, Bo, Chaz, D and Eve. They've already held initial training sessions with each of four teams over an assault course. And in the table here, we have the completion times in minutes that each trainer has taken with each team. We can see that there's a range of different times, some of the trainers being better with some teams, other trainers being better with others. The idea is for each of the four te teams to be allocated a trainer and the overall time to be minimised with any trainer having a maximum of one team. Obviously at the end one of the five trainers won't be allocated a team as there are only four teams. In the first part of the question we're asked to modify the table in order to apply the Hungarian algorithm. Having done that, we're then asked to reduce columns first and work through the algorithm to find the minimum total training time. OK, so the first thing we're asked to do is to turn this into a square array so that we can apply the algorithm. And we do that by adding a dummy row at the bottom so it will be a 5 by 5 array. And in that dummy row, we need the values here. We pick the biggest value in the total array, which is 26. And we put 26s right across this bottom row. That's the first part done. We now have an array with this dummy here with a dummy row so we can now work out our allocations. Don't forget here that this is team one, this is team two, this is team three, this is team four. The first thing we're asked to do is to reduce and it was columns first. So to reduce a column we pick the smallest value in that column. In the first column, in Ali's column, that's 16. And we subtract that value from each of the values in the column. So we end up with 0, 6, 5, 4, and 10. Then do the same for Bo's column. Well, the smallest value there is this value of 19. So again, we get 0 in the top row. 2 in the second row, 3, 2 again, and then 7 at the bottom. 18 is the smallest value in Chaz's row, so again 0 at the top, 2, 5, three and eight. For D, the smallest value is the value of 21 here. So we get four, five, zero, two and five. And then finally, smallest value here is 20, so 4, 5, 4, 0, and 6. So that's our column deductions done. The next step was row deductions. So we look for the smallest value in each row and deduct that. Well, in the first row, we have zeros. So we can't change that row. That's pointless deducting zeros, isn't it? So we put 0, 0, 0, 4, 4. Then for the next row, we've 
got two as our smallest element, haven't we? We've got two twos there, so we take two from each element in that row. And we get four, zero, zero, three, three. The next row we have zeros again, so all we can do is copy out the row, five, three, five, zero, four. The next row, again, there's a zero in there, so that row doesn't change. Four, two, three, two, zero. And then finally, the smallest element in the bottom row is five, so we subtract five from each element. We now look for the minimum number of lines to cross out all the zeros in the array. Generally the best way to do this is to look initially for lines with the most zeros in. So we've got a line here with three zeros so it would make sense to cross through there. We've now got a line down here with two a line across here with two whoops and this line at the end okay what we then do is we pick the smallest uncovered element well it's only these nine elements here that are uncovered and the smallest is two and we subtract that number from all of the uncovered ones so if we write it over here, we'll get 3, 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, and 3, 0, 1 there. So we've subtracted 2 from all of those uncovered elements. The elements covered by one line remain unchanged. So those three there, those three there in that row, and then these elements in the fourth column, and these elements in the fifth column will remain unchanged. The elements covered by two lines like the four here the four here the three here and the three here you add the smallest uncovered element to so that becomes six six five and five okay so a quick recap on what we've done we've discovered that the minimum number of lines that we can cover the zeros with is four we've drawn them out we then look for the smallest uncovered element, discover that that's two. We've subtracted that number from each of the uncovered elements. We've then picked out the elements that are only covered by one line and we've, they've remained unchanged. And then finally, the elements that are covered by two lines, we've added. Two, two. We've added the smallest uncovered element to it. We've ended up with this array here. If we now look for lines, we can see that there's no way that we can cover these zeros with less than five lines. Check it for a while if you want, but you'll find that we need five lines minimum to cover all of the zeros. So for that reason, we've reached our optimum. It's a five by five square array, we need five lines to cover the zeros, so we've optimised. So what we now do is we allocate, and to do that, the first thing we'll do is we'll look for rows and columns where we have no choice. So if you look at the first column, for example, we have to pick out that zero there. If we look at the last column, we have to pick out that zero there because there are no other zeros in that column. 
If we look at the third row, we have to pick out that zero there. This one, isn't it? That's the issue. We, it's the only way we can allocate the fifth row is with this second column. So we would choose that one there for that and this one here for that. We then move back to our original array and we see that what we've done is we've allocated Ali to team one. So it's Ali team one, it's at 16 there. So if we write it over here, we've got A1 and it's 16. Bo has been allocated to the dummy. So Bo hasn't been allocated, hasn't been used. Chaz has been allocated to team two. So if we put C2 up there and C2 is 20. So D has been allocated to team three and that is 21. And finally Eve has been allocated to team four and that is 20. Making a grand total of 77 minutes. And that is the Hungarian algorithm. OK, so let's have a quick check through the mark scheme now that we've succeeded in answering the question. We get one mark. It's a B mark for creating the extra row with all the values the same. We would usually use the value of the highest item there, the highest value in the array of 26. So that's what we did to start with. Reducing columns first, well, there's a method mark followed by an answer mark. You then reduce rows. Again, a method mark followed by an answer mark. Discovering that you cover the zeros with four lines and having the least entry remaining being two. And those were the lines we used. There are other solutions possible here as long as you've succeeded in covering with four lines. And then once we've augmented, we've subtracted twos from the uncovered elements, left the elements covered by just a single line the same and added two to the four elements that were covered by two lines. Then we check, we discover that we require five lines and we then allocate. And the matching gets you one mark. Don't forget to write down the expected time of 77 minutes for the other mark. Look at how the mark scheme presents it and use that to inform you about how best to answer these type of questions. OK, what I suggest you do now is have a look through past papers and try some of these Hungarian algorithm questions.